Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at the graphs of sec, cosec and cot so we can answer questions from exercise 6b. So we can get the graphs of cosec, sec and cot from the original sine, cos and tan graph. So let me show you how we can do that. If you take the original sine graph here, we have um, <clears throat> starting off in the decimal values, it hits a peak of 1, goes back into the decimal values, goes into the negative decimal values, hits a minimum point of minus 1, and then heads back up into the decimal values. Now, just a reminder then that 1 over a decimal, a decimal generally that's in between 1 and 0, is going to give you a much bigger number. For example, 1 over 0.2 is going to give you 5, 1 over 0 0.01 is going to give you 100. Um, so these graphs are going to be quite big, <clears throat> both on the negative side and on the positive side. And this, in fact, is what they're going to look like. Now, let me explain a few of the key points. At this point here, at 90 degrees, we have the sine value of 1. If we were to calculate 1 over 1, we will get 1 again. So the cos graph, the cosec graph at 90 degrees will also intersect the sine graph at 90 degrees, both values giving us 1. And the same thing will happen down here at minus 1. So in fact it reaches a minimum point at 90 degrees of, minus, of 1 and a maximum point of minus 1 at 270. But now let's think about what happens in these decimal values here. When the sine graph is in between 0 to 1, when we're going to, the cosec graph is going to be 1 over all of these decimal values. So as the decimal gets smaller, the 1 over decimal value is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, up to a point of where it reaches an asymptote. So there are going to be asymptote at this point here, this point here, and this point here, because we can't have 1 over 0. Thinking about it in between 90 and 180 degrees, if we have 1 over a decimal, an increasingly, sorry, decreasingly smaller decimal, then it's going to um, increase in value when we take 1 over that decimal value. And the same thing happens on the um, negative side as well. If we've got 1 over a negative decimal, this is going to be a bigger value, <coughs> or a more negative value anyway. So this is what the cosec graph is. And it continues to repeat itself. So it's going to go like this, like this, and so on, and so on, and so on. So key points here are that it's undefined every 180 degrees. We have intersection points at 90, 270, and plus every 180 degrees on from there as well. <coughs> so we get a lot of asymptotes as well. We can do a very similar thing, and it looks very similar as well for the sec graph. If we take the cos graph and think about and consider the 1 over values, first of all, they're going to intersect at 1, minus 1, and back up at 1 again. We're definitely going to have asymptote at 90 degrees and 270 degrees because we can't have 1 over 0. <clears throat> and then the graph is going to fit around doing the opposite of what this uh, decimal is going to give us. So 1 over this decimal between 0 and 90 is going to give us a big value. 1 over the negative decimals between 90 and 270 are going to give us bigger negative values. And the um, 1 over values of the decimals in between 270 and 360 are going to give us big values in that case there. So this is what the graph looks like. Again, intersection points at 0 degrees, 360 degrees, and 180 degrees. Undefined whenever the graph is equal to 0. So we get asymptotes there and there. The tan graph is a little bit different. This is our original tan graph. <coughs> and we have asymptotes here. And here for the tan graph. Now, the co the um, Cotts graph is actually going to be the reverse of the tan graph like this. So if you can imagine it as the tan graph <coughs> gets closer towards 0, 1 over 0 is going to tend up towards infinity, and 1 over um, 
the uh, as x tends towards um, 180 from the negative side, that's going to be 1 over a negative decimal, so that would tend downwards, this would tend upwards with an asymptote in between, and this would tend downwards as well. So it's the opposite, like a reflected um, tan graph. At 45 degrees it will be equal to each other and at um, 225 it will also be equal to each other as well. And bang in the middle here as well, um, that would be 135 that will also be equal to as well. Okay, so for tan 90 is undefined, therefore cot of that 90 degrees is equal to zero. So key points for the sec graph, it reaches a it reaches a minimum at 90 degrees 1 and a maximum at 270 minus 1 and then it just, um, and every 180 degrees from then. Asymptote every 180 degrees starting from 0. Cos graph is going to look very similar, in fact you can continue these on and you can see it's looking very similar to the... Um, so this cosec graph, very similar properties, and the Cotts graph is basically a reflected tan graph. Uh, the last thing we need to do in this section here is to just look at a few transformations to do with these types of graphs. <clears throat> so if you remember, the 2 that's inside the bracket with the sec function here is going to be a f of a x type transformation, <clears throat> which is going to squish it inwards by a scale factor of a half in this case, or 1 over a in general. And then the one on the outside is going to move it up by 1. So taking each of these transformations in turn, starting with the sec graph, put in your asymptote first. And remember, everything's going to get squished in. So it was every 180, but now it's going to be every 90. So draw in your sec graph. That's, this is your sec graph above, this is your sec 2 theta graph down below. And then move it up by 1 because there's a 1 plus on the outside. <clears throat> and that's our final answer. <clears throat> okay, another one then. Sketch for the graph y equals 4 cosec x where x is in between 0 to 2 pi. So back to radians mode now. We can do sine, uh, sorry, we can do cosec, sec, and cot in radians mode as well. <clears throat> so this is the original um, cosec graph, minimum points at minus, minimum points at 1, maximum points at minus 1. But that, if there's a 4 in front, is all going to get stretched outwards by a scale factor 4. So just changing the labels from a 1 to a 4, and you can basically draw the same graph again. But just bear in mind that the transformation that's happened is that everything's been stretched from the x-axis by a scale factor 4. But as long as you've got it labelled on your um, axes that the minimum point is now 4 and the maximum point is now minus 4, yeah, you're safe. Uh, part B then, on the same axis, sketch the line y equals x. Um, so in this case here, so when x is pi by 2, y is equal to pi by 2. Now if you remember, pi is about 3, 3 divided by 2 is about 1.5. So we'll have a first coordinate about here. Pi, um, when theta is, when x is equal to pi for the graph y equals x, the y coordinate will also equal x. So in this case here, the coordinate will be about 3.14, 3.14. So another coordinate here, and then link the two coordinates together. I was a little bit off, but that's okay. Um, state the number of solutions for the equation in between 0 to 2 pi. There are no solutions in between 0 to 2 pi um, because there are no intersections on this graph. Right then, so your turn to have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this one out. Right, okay then, let's have a go at drawing these two graphs then. Let's have a go at using our fancy colours that we have. So let's draw the axis in black. And it's from 0 to 360, so we don't need to go too far really. Let's draw the cot one in 
um, red then. So it's cot theta. Now, as far as I can remember, the cot has asymptote where the tan was equal to zero. The tan was equal to zero at um, 180, zero as well. So zero, 180, and 360. That was when the tan graph equals zero. And it's not the tan graph, it's the tan graph like backwards. So going back, intersect up, back, intersect up. There we are. So that is a pretty good cos graph, to be fair. I'm pretty happy with myself there. And the blue one, let's show this in um, for, for sine 2 theta. Now, sine 2 theta um, is, uh, is going to be repeated twice over a 360 degree period. It's going to repeat, it's going to go back to where it started at 180. So starting from 0, going up, intersecting at 90. And going back up, going up, down, up. Okay, there we are. So that's what I am reckon the um, sine 2x graph is going to look like then. So um, let's just draw some numbers in as well. So 90 degrees would be here, 180 degrees would be here, uh, 270 degrees would be here, 360 degrees would be here. <coughs> Okay, so there we are. I reckon in this graph here, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six solutions. So I reckon there are going to be six solutions for cot equals sine two theta. Okay, so there we are. That's all we had to do for that question, which wasn't too bad. Just draw a couple of graphs and that's it. Right, thanks very much for watching. Have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 6b. There are a few more trickier ones. Have a go at the exam style questions with an E next to them, the, prob the problem solving ones with a P next to them, and persevere through the difficult ones and ask your teacher for help if you don't understand anything. Thanks very much for watching.